So Katie Neistat isn't the only one that gets to travel to exotic locations to test drones. I'm on the beautiful Thai location of Kolak and I've got my Sunly 4K to flight test today. So let's get on with it. Be sure to click that subscribe button so that you don't miss part three. Give the video a thumbs up if you enjoy it and comment below with your thoughts. Right, so I've got my drone here in its lovely little storage box that it comes with, and I think I've charged up both batteries. It's just a shame they have no indicator on the outside to show you their charge status, but plugging them in, they were both green, so fingers crossed we should be okay. So slot the battery into the drone. Now I'm hoping this is fully charged. Press the power button. There's our startup sound. Now what I'm gonna do, looks like the other battery I've brought actually isn't charged, so Gonna get that charging up separately now with my power adapter. Wait for the green light on there. Okay, that's all good. So there's our sort of completion of startup sound. So the drone is now ready and should be emitting a Wi Fi signal. Open up our Wi Fi settings and then we should be able to see. There we go. Now we're already connected to it. The wireless access key was one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight as usual. So we're now connected to the drone. So I can now start up the mobile app, which is called AirFly, as I've just shown you how to install that, very easy. Uh, now I might struggle to actually see my screen here. It's so bright today, but we'll see how we get on. It's also quite windy here, which unfortunately is a bit unavoidable, but we're connected to the drone and there we can see the live feed. Now that is just beautiful via that. I'll just quickly take a photo. There we go. The phone vibrates when you take a photo, but that looks beautiful through there. Take another one, there we go. Put the drone back down. Now the first thing we're gonna do is go through the calibration routine, which is here, calibration. So compass calibration first. Keep it away from magnetic surfaces. I think we'll be fine all the way out here. So it says, please move your device in a circle of eight. So I'm doing that now, and I can see the progress bar in the app increasing very, very slowly. And you can see the manoeuvre I'm doing here, circle of eight. And this is quite tedious. I prefer the normal routine, to be honest, where you just rotate around. But I don't know, perhaps this is more accurate. Who knows? I feel a bit stupid doing this, to be honest. Um, <laughs> just over halfway now. Wow, this is really a long process. I mean, maybe you can perfect this by getting the technique right, but this has taken a long time. There we go, calibration complete. The drone actually now automatically reboots, it looks like, after you complete that. So of course now what we've got to do is reconnect the Wi-Fi to it. So we're now reconnected to Wi-Fi. Click on enter device. Camera connecting. There we go, back with our live feed now, which is good. So the next thing we'll do is accelerometer calibration. So we've got to keep it as level as we can. Now this is going to be tricky here at the beach, but I'll do my best. <laughs> Press start. So now that we've completed that, it's rebooting again. So this re <laughs> we're probably halfway through our battery by this point. So not particularly impressed with this calibration routine. But you know, I, I would give it credit, it's certainly thorough and perhaps I shouldn't give that as a negative in all honesty. So just waiting for it to start up again when it gives its second beep. There we go, there's the Wi-Fi that's appeared on my phone now. So we're now connected, we can go back to the app and enter device. And finally, we're back on. Right, hopefully, with all that complete, we can actually get this flight tested now. <laughs> so I've got the camera facing away from me. Now the battery percentage, there isn't actually a percentage. It just shows a tiny little diagram. And at the moment it's showing half, which is a bit of a frustration because this was a fully charged battery. 
But I think what we'll do is see how long we can get it to fly for. So I'm gonna go into video mode first of all. Now in terms of video resolution, I'm gonna set it to 1080p because that gives us EIS. And we'll have a look at what it looks like without EIS later as well. But for now, we'll go with 1080 EIS. At 4K, it doesn't incorporate EIS. So you're obviously not gonna get stabilized footage. So we are on, let's see, GPS mode. Now enabled, so we've got the little button at the top. There we go, GPS, we've got a green icon, that means we've got signal. Uh, so let's try and take off and see what happens. <laughs> so here we go, please keep the drain to blah, blah, blah. Scenic mode, okay, slides take off, here we go. Very, very slow, relaxed takeoff, but we're in the air. So it is positioning via GPS at the moment. Uh, and as I say, there's a bit of a wind, unfortunately, so I'm gonna rotate it around a bit. So it's facing into the wind. Well, that seems to be a pretty good hover at the moment. What a beautiful place to fly a drone, eh? Now it is actually ascending at the moment, and I think that's probably because of the incoming wind. So it should be controlling its throttle a little bit better there. But it seems nice and stable. It's very quiet as well. Let's bring it down a little bit. The controls are very, very easy going. It's not, a, not in any sort of a rush and I didn't see any sensitivity in the settings either. Let's have a closer look at it. Again, it is ascending with the wind that's coming in, which is a bit frustrating. But let's get the video recording. So we're recording now. And this has enabled EIS now that we've started the recording. Now I don't like these fixed joysticks because they don't move with my fingers. So I'm gonna change the control mechanism to joystick. That should now mean that I can put my finger wherever I want on the controls. Yeah, there we go. I can now put my fingers anywhere I want and I've got full control of it, which is much better, obviously. Uh, so let's, obviously there's no camera tilt on this, which is a bit frustrating, but let's have a little fly around. Now remember, this is Wi-Fi only. And as I mentioned, the drone is in no rush to fly anywhere. <laughs> it's very, very subdued. So I'll get some altitude so we can see me. But it's very responsive, I'll give it that. When we let go of the controls, obviously the GPS hovers kicking in and it is holding its position really, really well. Uh, EIS looks really nice with the live feed. Let's get a bit more altitude here. Keeping an eye on my battery as well. Now because of the wind and there not being a mechanical gimbal, you can see the video is tilted. If we face it towards the wind, we'll lose that tilt and get a much better shot but from the live feed that I can see on the screen, that's looking really, really nice. So let's fly it away and then turn it around towards me to have a look at me. Here we go. So I might have to fly it a bit further away. Now, because there is no sensitivity control on here, it's a little bit frustrating because of the wind. It means obviously I can't really fight it through the wind so downwind, it flies really fast, <laughs> like that. But upwind, a bit more of a struggle, but there I am. You can see me on the screen now. Video quality, again, on the live feed looks really good. Controls are very nice. It's very much like Dobby to control this one, actually. Very, very much like Dobby. Now let's quickly switch to 4K mode and just see the difference without EIS. So look how stable the video is right now. We'll now stop recording, go to 4K, go back and start recording. So now you're seeing video in 4K mode. And bearing in mind it is a windy day, but considering it's windy, that video looks pretty stable actually. Quite impressed by that. Uh, now we'll do a bit of flying around in 4K just to show you the difference again. Not seeing much latency in the live feed, it seems to be quite stable fly it out. Now what is frustrating, as with any of these non-mechanical gimbal drones, is that the camera angle is fixed. So it's pointing down 
probably about 15 degrees or so. And there's nothing I can do about that, which is annoying. Now, seeing as it's capturing in 4K, you'd think there might be a kind of pan and scan tilt capability, but it doesn't have that. But you're seeing non-stabilized video at the moment, 4K, and I don't think that's so bad, actually. Obviously, it'd be nice to see it actually on the computer. But that's not too bad at all. So let's stop that video now, and we'll go to stabilized again. Getting good battery life here. The battery symbol is a bit frustrating because it doesn't give you any real indication of how much life you've got left. But, so let's try and do a bit of a slow cinematic style shot as best I can via me. Now it is hard via a smartphone to get any kind of a cinematic shot, but that's not too bad. Nice and stable. Pan around a little bit. Does fly quite well. Now I've got a warning of low battery. So I think now would be a good time to test return to home. So our return to home button is this one down here. It's gonna to rise to 10 meters. Now you can set all of this in the settings, but we'll leave it at the default. Slide, and I can now see it going up. You can see me on the shot as well. We're still recording here. And it's flying towards us now. Now remember we took off from the white mat. it would be very interesting to see just how accurately it's able to land back on that mat. You can see it coming down now. Yeah, it's descending. Here we go, this will be very interesting. I might have to save it in case it goes near the sand. Coming down very, very slowly. Now, I don't know whether it's using its optical sensors at this point, maybe just GPS. Looks like it's just GPS because it's a little bit away from the mat. So I'm actually gonna hand catch it now. There we go. So you can see that we're about maybe a metre and a half, two metres away from where we took off, which is a bit of a shame, but that's not too bad. It's obviously just using GPS, not optical positioning. But I think that initially that's a really good test of the flyability. It's nice to fly. Uh, battery life wasn't too bad considering we spent at least uh, six or seven minutes calibrating the accelerometer and the um, compass as well. Uh, nice and easy to fly. I think one problem is sensitivity, as we found with the, as we found with one of the other drones that we tested not long ago, one of the GPS drones, uh, didn't quite have enough sensitiv sensitivity to fight through any kind of wind. But when it needs to, it seems to come back pretty well on its own. So return to home works obviously as well. Just also worth pointing out in the app that there are some default range settings built in here. So it only, only let you fly 20 meters away from itself. Uh, out of the box and the return altitude is 10 meters, but you can configure all of this, which is really nice. And it's unusual to see configuration options like that for a small drone like this. You certainly don't get that with Moment Drone or Dobby. We've also just, whilst we're looking at that, got network settings here so we can change and toggle to 2.4 gig instead of five gig, obviously calibration as well. And then you've got the control mechanism, which I changed whilst we were flying. You've got different buttons here. But yeah, I think initially for part one, that was a pretty successful test. Flight time, uh, not too bad at all, considering we drained most of the battery anyway before we even took off. So that's it for part one of the flight test. There will be a part two very, very shortly, where we'll be looking at the autonomous features of this drone, which will include the GPS tracking, the follow me. Um, that's obviously the key feature that most people are very interested in. So stay tuned, click thumbs up if you enjoyed this first part, and of course, click subscribe if you don't wanna miss the second. Thanks very much for watching.